Jake, hi, how are you? Hi, Leo, good to see you. I'm well, how are you? I'm great, thanks, great. Jake, this is the first time that we've sort of filmed you for this, but I thought, you know, anybody watching this video is going to be able to see your title below, and that they'll see you, quantitative analyst and data scientist. I've always found that quite a technical reference, and I've always been interested to understand more about it. So I wondered if you could explain a bit more about what that involves. So it's ultimately about making better decisions, communicating those decisions, and analyzing those decisions. There's been a big change in the last 30 years, not just in finance, in every industry, with the explosion of data. Uh, you know, there's, there's sources that say that the amount of data we produce every day, if it was burnt onto DVDs and stacked up one by one, that tower would reach 40 times the height of the Eiffel Tower. That so, has, sorry, so your job's analyzing data and you, you're talking about stacks beyond the Eiffel Tower. How long does that take? How is that even possible? So that's exactly it. We've had to develop new tools and techniques. The old tools we use maybe couldn't handle millions of rows of data to, to do the analysis. So we, although the, the title is, is sort of highlighting that movement towards more data intensive approach, I'd be doing the team a massive disservice to say we haven't, we all gone this way because of the availability of data to us and the techniques available to us to analyze our decisions. Sure, sure. So all these sort of software programming skills that you can then take to sort of harvest the key information that you're looking for in the data. Exactly. So you can then concentrate on the valuable stuff. Exactly. And then finding ways to communicate that succinctly in, in a lot of the time in one visualization. So we are able to look at it quickly to know what's sure. going on. Part of that has been building stuff that's available to us no matter where we are in the world. Um, the, the business analysis tools that we use, we can access them on our phone despite what country you're in. I can update the fund's performance. I can break that performance down so you can see where it is no matter where you are. All right, Jake, thanks. That's giving some insight into the sort of scientific side of the, the role. Um, can you give an example of what you've been working on lately? So one of the things that's interesting about this uh, the high level recovery is, has, been, has been the rate at which the US has recovered. So one of the questions that we have asked ourselves and actually it's, it's come as well from the advisory side is, is where are we seeing cheap stocks? Is, have we had an immediate recovery? And you see the S&P as at the date that we're doing this recording has gone past 3000. Uh, uh, it's about, about the same level it was three months ago. That's a very, very rapid recovery. So we've been breaking that down, breaking it into different companies, into different sectors, looking at the individual drivers. And now we're doing the comparisons with the UK, the FTSE, the FTSE All Share, the stock 600 in Europe, analyzing them against each other to see what the differences are in the recovery. And is there way, are we seeing cheap stocks in, companies that haven't experienced such a rapid recovery as what seems to be the tech stocks in the US. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you speak of looking for opportunities, this is all part exactly. of Exactly, that. and that's what we're Fishing always doing. It's all about looking for opportunities. And in a smart way. Mm. Um, great, Jake, now we first wrote about the market volatility surrounding the health crisis late February time, I think. What's 2020 been like so far for you as a year in comparison to previous? Um, yeah, it's been stressful at times, but it's fascinating as well. I started work in 2008, so this is my second um, market crash. This has come from more an external shock than internal problems um, that the banks were having. And the banks are really well capitalized this time. So there's different dynamics at play. They manifest in similar ways, but it's, been, it's interesting to see, um, to draw parables, but also to see the differences. Mm -hmm. Um, and just quickly, we're all seeing changes to the way that we live our daily lives. Uh, are you seeing any changes to the way that you work? Yeah, so um, we get tested every year to make sure that we are able to run money if, if we weren't able to come into the office. Our IT have done a fantastic job. We've been able to do everything uh, from a remote location that we can do in the office. So that's been fantastic. So it's not stopped our productivity, 
uh, whether I see a big change in the long run, I'm always reluctant to, to extrapolate short-term trends into it and make sweeping predictions about the future. I think remote, a lot of people have been predicting that remote working will take off for many, many years. And despite that, cities have got bigger and bigger. So it's gonna be interesting to see how this crisis manifests and changes behavior in the long run. And ultimately, it's gonna be fascinating to look back two, three, 10 years from now and look and see how this year changed behavior. Long-term analysis, I like it. Yeah. Thanks, Jake. Um, I'll get on and get this video out now. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've got any questions, please send them across uh, to the investment team or anybody else or drop me an email directly. Uh, I hope this provides a little insight into Jake's specific role within the investment team. And uh, we'll speak to you again soon. Jake, thank you very much. Thanks, Leo. Good to see you. Take care. Bye.